Whether you've been in Spain for six months or six years, don't miss Payathair and Aredia in conversation with Moody on Bay Radio every other Wednesday at 10 a.m. Payathair and Aredia are your international lawyers on the Costa Blanca and have been looking after the expat community for more than a decade. See more at alicantilawyers.es. Back on track with a friend from Payathair and Aredia. No, I said one or the other will be in, and it's Pedro. Welcome back. Buenos dias. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Tiempo. Yes, Hello, it's everyone. Been a while. Um, yeah, it's well, been a while. since we saw you. It's been a busy time for you, I'm sure. Lots of different... You get a variety of cases that you get involved with. I was talking to Ignacio last time he was yeah, in yeah. about the sort of things you'd uh, do on a daily basis. Yeah, that's right. I mean, obviously, I mean, every day or every week is uh, absolutely different. Or, and, yeah, we deal with different um, kind of uh, files or litigation We as we represent many, many clients on investments or taxes or immigration. So, obviously, there is a um, dynamic in, um, information which obligate us to, to study a lot and to, to be well informed in order to inform at the end to our clients. Mm. You advice. know, when we see, when we see on uh, TV and film, which I always come back to, it's, my, it's the, where I get all my information about lawyers and cases <laughs> and things. We see the exciting bits, but it's not all of it's uh, that much fun. But do you, how much time do you spend in the office rather than on the road and in courts and the like? Well, I mean, um, in the office, I mean, probably and probably most of the time is in the office. I oh. would say, I mean, I would say like... Um, between uh, 40 60 percent is in the office and then obviously we I dedicate a, a lot of in the court and in notaries offices and obviously outside with clients and, and in different areas or different uh, scenarios like um, like uh, um, restaurants or like uh, I mean uh, you could be also in a place that is is just a very private place in order to, to speak about things but outside it, the the office normally when we speak about serious things about confident things I like to speak that in the office where I I obviously we have a absolutely a more confidence and no one is listening no one is um, watching us I mean I, and I feel more comfortable and clients feel more comfortable yeah they probably do in a more formal setting there yeah. you know this is a real a real thing yeah. so I did uh, I don't know if it was you guys so somebody told me about when they like to go to people's houses sometimes when they're dealing with stuff because often when they come to you they forget some documents uh, so they have to you know you have to come back later or make another appointment but if you're at their house it's probably there somewhere so they've got everything there yeah <laughs> Thing. Um, well, yeah, one of the things I always, um, I mean, uh, what secretaries, and when we have a first appointment, and when someone is coming with us some questions, some queries about anything, we, we tell them, bring to the office everything. Mm, yeah. Even though even though you think that it's something that is not useful, it's something that is not even important, we say to them, bring any document you have, so we take a look. And, and normally, I when I see a, like a big file of uh, 100 pages, um, even though I just need probably the first pages or what the information the client has said, I always say, well, let me see these documents that you have here. And I take a look at it. It's just some, some minutes. It's just rapidly. And sometimes, sometimes I see th- something important, something which is important, something that uh, uh, is relevant for, for that per- specific person, for that specific issue or maybe a different issue. I remember one client, I cannot see her name, but I remember when she came to the office, um, regarding it was just a, a normal consultation about taxes. And she brought, as we said, um, uh, many, many, many documents from the property that she bought. And I realized that the previous lawyer, the previous um, um, <clears throat> uh, law firm, um, retained a lot of money. We're talking about thousands of euros. She didn't know. She didn't. She, I mean, she did what it was asked to be done. Right. And I, I realized that it was um, a lot of money that was paid incorrectly. And was applied and correctly. Well, I I'm, I may think of a good faith of that, but it was something that some years after I asked her, "Do you receive this money back?" She says, "No." So um, she didn't even know that. Obviously, she didn't. She if she doesn't bring me that document, and it had not, if I don't take a look on that, she it was it was around more than fifteen thousand euros. Right. So and you- I just sent a letter. I sent an email. No answer. I sent a letter. Uh, an aggressive letter. Yeah. Um, in order to say, well, you cannot retain this money, um, and and he was paid back in the following week. Wow. Yeah. So they wouldn't have known if she hadn't uh, yeah, exactly. brought everything with her. It's a thing, isn't it? When you're, uh, well, even which when you're an adult doing anything, just keep everything, <laughs> keep all documents and receipts uh, yeah. somewhere you know, organised. Yeah. It took me a long time to realise that and get organised, but yeah, I think I'm there these days. Here's the thing, I was going to, because um, we'll get on to talking um, visas, which is a big part of what you do, and we talk about it a lot on this, visas and property and buying property. Um, but I said that I would mention this, that Dave, who came through earlier, wanted to ask about how he goes about securing dual nationality 
And I said, well, I can answer that for you. You can't. <laughs> As a Brit, there's no such thing. You, there's no dual citizenship with uh, Britain and Spain. Exactly. Mm. Exactly. It's not, it, it, we still don't have a, this kind of um, agreement between countries. Um, um, maybe in the future it's going to happen something. I have tomorrow, an, well, it's not an appointment, it's a conference, which I will be speaking about um, uh, the right to vote by uh, international citizens that live in Spain. And uh, I know it's going to be the, the British uh, council there tomorrow. And I assume that she will be speaking about right to vote about uh, uh, British citizens. But also I, th I assume that she will be speaking about something about, well, what is going on with the nationality, uh, maybe agreement between countries or, yeah. Hmm. So do, when, do you mean voting in Spain? In Spain. Yes, <clears> it, <throat> because it came about, they've finally sorted it that... Um, You know, there used to be, I think it was the 15-year rule that if you'd been here that long, you, don't, mm -hmm. you couldn't vote for in elections back in the UK um, as a resident here, but you can yeah. now. You can, yeah, yes, in, in the UK. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. I didn't know that. Mm. Okay. That and, uh, but the, the dual citizenship thing, it, the, some, this was a recent thing as well. With France, um, mm -hmm. you can. That was only in the last couple of years, wasn't it, they finally did that? Well, the rule is really, I mean, uh, the if there's an agreement, uh, then uh, cannot be, you, do, can, you cannot have double nationalities. I mean, I have seen many, many, many people that has uh, double passports, right? the passport from different countries, and said, well, I, I have double nationality. Well, this is not correct. Well, with France, what happened is that <clears throat> there's like a soft uh, way without being an agreement. It's a soft way in order to agree that in France uh, you are able, you are considered as a nationality of France, and in Spain you are considered as a nationality in, uh, in Spain without rejecting your uh, French nationality as well as in France. This happens in many other countries, but Spain is one of the countries that in many occasions, I would say 99% of occasions, if you get another nationality without an agreement between countries, it looks like that you are rejecting the other nationality. Mm. This has a lot of impact in, in applicable law. It is international law. It has a lot of impact if it's going to be uh, apply some other law that is not Spanish. Which would, with the consequences that um, affect me uh, with the economy, with the assets, uh, with the beneficiaries of an inheritance, for example, it has a lot of impact. So, if someone is going to change the nationality uh, or uh, uh, regarding uh, just to plan the future about uh, assets or uh, beneficiaries, family, it's important to 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 know what are the consequences in some ways. Yeah. Yes, because it does make things uh, difficult, and it, as you say, when you're applying a law from a different country. Uh, things yeah. could be completely different. Yeah, at this time, it is. I mean, nationality obviously is uh, extremely important. I, I personally, <clears throat> when someone comes and says, "Well, I would like to to start uh, a Spanish uh, nationality process is to get a nationality," well, I, I always I make some queries in order to understand why why this is the why you want. I mean, it's uh, because. Uh, in many occasions, it's not needed. Not necessary. Many, it's no. necessary. Even and now, if, even now with in British, many occasions, no. if I were in the skin of my client, I would say, "Well, you don't need it. I don't do it." I mean, it's uh, something that is is not is not going to be bad for you not do not know, having it. So, um, in many occasions, uh, it's not my my part to convince, but obviously to recommend and say, "Well, um, this is what you're going to get if you get the Spanish nationality, nationality, which is not too much, really, I have to say, because I mean, if once you are resident in Spain, you have a lot of a lot of, uh, uh, I would say, as, as equally rights, except some uh, little things, which may be important, but except little things. And so it's, um, and you will lose a lot of things from your home country. So mm. it's, it's it's something that is you need to you need to think about. That. Yeah, uh, so I see. This, um, you can do it with a lot of the South American countries, Latin American countries. Yeah, that's right. Only colonies here. Yeah, yeah, that's the, yeah because it's it's the least they can do. In Spain. Right? <laughs> <laughs> to say, okay, yes, yeah, that's fine. You're welcome here. Um, have you seen the um, the Spanish citizenship test? Have you seen much of it? They, they, I like doing that. It's a little quiz thing sometimes. Put it up to see how much you know. Well, Because yeah. there's one in the UK, and it's really hard. Um, I think Prince Harry and Meghan had a go at it. They had a look at it, because I think she tried to... Uh, mm -hmm. You know, put in the application. It was really tough, but unnecessarily so. I mean, there's you know, sort of historical questions that you just don't need to know. I mean, it's it's nice to know these things, yeah, but they're I mean, not really yeah, essential. Yeah, yeah. It's been a long. I mean, uh, right now is an immigration department who I mean, he's, he's dealing with with that. Obviously, the test we don't we don't manage with that. There are some academies that work with that in the in the past. We don't we don't do that. But no, sure. I saw I saw one of the tests. I remember that it was some questions that I. In many occasions, and I, I like, I read a lot of books. I like history. I like culture. I read newspapers. I'm more or less 
update it to the um, uh, system, to the politics, uh, yeah. and, and to the history. And some questions I I really couldn't answer. Anyway, let's get on to something that's come up in the last couple of weeks, certainly in the intervening <clears throat> period since uh, Ignacio was in two weeks ago, about the uh, the later startups, as it's called um, in Spain. This is something that's been mooted, and it looks like it's going ahead, incorporating what we like to call the nomad visa. Mm-hmm. Um, what's the latest? Um, basically, we? it's going to be focused on, on, on in two different pillars. One of them is going to be for companies that are going to... Really, the, the, the law wants to attract talent and attract companies. In many occasions, in the companies are focused on the digital um, scenario. And it's going to have like a big benefit. It's going to be... Uh, it's going to have like a, on taxes and in order to be installed in Spain for these companies. But also, <clears throat> and this is the other pillar, is also to attract talent, uh, people that will be able to work in Spain with a, with a computer, really. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> yeah. That basically, technically, I mean, tele, um, uh, like we call it in Spanish, is teletrabajador. Yeah. Um, it's like uh, someone who can work really anywhere. I mean, for example, myself, I could be, in many occasions, I could be working in, in different places or different, uh, because my work is, in at this time, is a lot uh, by phone, by video conference, by email, a lot. Not everything, but a lot. It works like that. Even though the, the court uh, hearings in many occasions right now is been by 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 the computer. In many occasions, not everything, obviously. Hmm. And <clears throat> well, this 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 second uh, pillar, which is going to be at uh, in order to attract the talent and uh, and people who work for companies outside, because we have a we have a very difficulty with the non lucrative visa, with the non working visa. Because at the end, people do not apply for self-employment because at the end, the family cannot be brought. And then we'll say, we have different resolutions by judges says, okay, the non-lucrative visa covers that you cannot work in Spain. But it doesn't mean that you cannot work for a company outside. Immigration office rejected. And then the resolution by judges in, in all of Spain was approving that you can have a non-lucrative visa while working for a company outside. And proving that you have enough savings without working to live in Spain. Yes, that's right too. So to this this nomad visa, what is going to attract talent and is going to, in in some way, to eliminate that problem that we had before, is just uh, people can stay in Spain, can work in Spain, and uh, if the income is no more than eighty percent, is no more than twenty percent for companies in Spain or for income that you get in Spain, and if it means that you have to have at least 80% of your income from companies outside Spain. Yes. As, a, as a self-employment, as, a, as an employee, in, 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 as what it says um, in the law. Important th- issues is going to attract, obviously, is, is you will not be paying your uh, taxes accordingly to you if you were resident. It's going to be attractive because you will be paying taxes accordingly if you were non-resident. Mm? So lower. Lower. You're probably paying be less. Okay, so it might be that if you are working, so the non-lucrative visa. I mean, it's as it sounds that you can't work in Spain, but maybe you are working for a company exactly. outside. <clears throat> you may be paying more than you ta- exactly, in tax than exactly, you would on a exactly. And this is one of the questions. I mean, we are having a webinar because obviously I need to entry on the law and study it carefully and specifically, and see which is going to be proceeding. The law is going to start in the first of January, so we still have one month and a half uh, ahead in order to. To revise and check everything, and as, as in the first of January is gonna is gonna be a study approving. It's gonna start to in order to make applications on that, and um, well, uh, one of the benefits, obviously, as I said, is that the taxes are gonna be reduced. Taxes, because if you are non-resident, if you are resident in Spain as a non-lucrative visa, you are resident in Spain for tax purposes. So at the end, you pay the average rate. What gum goes from nineteen to forty-seven or more. more. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So at the end, the average, <coughs> as it is on a scale, maybe it could be like 35, 40 percent of your income is high. <coughs> many clients, many uh, potential clients, do not want to come to Spain because of that. Um, yeah. I have had many, 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 many um, consultations uh, because of that. But there are some questions that has not still been answered. What about the model of 720? What if you become resident, even though for tax purposes you are non resident? <clears throat> what happens with the first year, which you get a visa, is not an authorization to be resident, which will be in the following two years and two years, like the non lucrative visa. What happens with the wealth tax? Hmm. Obviously, if you are non resident for tax purposes, uh, wealth tax should be the same exactly, and also model 720, but it's. it's it is not really um, uh, mentioned. I guess we assume it's going to be the same situation as, is, as for example, the Beckham Law that we had. Yeah. Beckham Law is when uh, the difference here, the Beckham Law really is going to be like uh, when someone comes to work for a Spanish company 
and and there are some benefits in order to reduce the taxes to 24 percent and uh, well in this one is going to be also reduced that percentage um, um, and um, and for many companies in the world that wants to be uh, is, want to be attracted into Spain, you know, it's going to be reduced into into fifteen percent in the following years. The benefit, so it's really it's, it's quite good. It's mm. quite good according to the Spanish tax law. Yeah, you know, as, you say, as you say, there's still one or two uh, questions to be answered with it. So, would they, if they were coming on a, a nomad visa, they would be tax residents? They'd have to stay. <clears throat> well, they will be non-resident for tax purposes. They will be residents. Mm. As an immigration situation, yeah, a scenario will be a. It's like a golden visa. We said, well, you could be resident if you wanted to. The t- TIE card it says authorization to resident as an investor. Mm-hmm. Well, in uh, we don't know what will be said in the TIE of a nomad visa residence, or but will be said will be said something like that. Authorization to be to resident as um as um as a nomad uh, as a visa for for the. Uh, uh, working outside of Spain. Mm. Okay, but if they if they manage to get hold of one of those as a nomad visa, would if they didn't spend more than half the year here? <clears> well, they will. I mean, they, uh, but they're still paying. They still have to pay tax here. I don't. That's that, a good question. That's uh, a good question. That, yeah, it's, 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 it's <clears> just me. I'm going that's easily a, confused, <clears> but you know, it's a thing. It's always that. What it, <clears> it, it seems to me that whatever the visa is, however you've done it, if you stay more yeah. than 183 days, yeah, you at are the end, tax exactly. At the end, if you live in Spain and if you get this kind of regime of a, of a, of a situation where you are living in Spain. Well, obviously, you will have to, to pay accordingly to this kind of regime. But what if you get this, but at the end, really, you do not live in Spain uh, more than one or two, three days? Uh, well, I assume that that year um, will not be subject to the, this uh, income tax declaration. No. Obviously, it uh, will happen. What will happen, it will be... It is really a contradiction because someone which is working here is physically here, but is getting income outside of Spain. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And it's not a resident, but will be no, uh, I assume that will not be taxes to be paid, but will not be renewed. Okay. That's a problem. Yeah, problem. sure. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. That's it. After one year, say, well, I want to renew for another two years, then you will not be renewed. That, that's it. That's a question that we will have to answer in the following weeks before the 1st of January, because I assume that many, many clients that will be answering that. Mm. The Nunuk divisa is, has some similar, similarities, I think, on these kind of situations. It's like one year, then two years. The same office, the same who approves Golden Visa is going to be approving this also. It's going to be a straightforward, and uh, it's going to attract like a lifestyle in order to attract people that want to stay in Spain, not to pay too much taxes, and live in Spain for some years, and yeah. then go back. Hmm. I'm, I'm, I don't know why. I'm, I'm, I've got a stereotype of uh, the people that are going to be applying for this. They, they go around on an electric scooter and a backpack and stuff. <laughs> and just take the laptop everywhere with them. Probably yeah. don't even live in a in a fixed place. But uh, the um, yeah, that, so that would there be people in a situation now already living here that it might be in their interest to it could be to it could be to, uh, it could be and uh, to this when it comes in for this is why I mean this non-lucrative um, um, visa that are right now uh, got from from uh, people in Spain I th- I mean I assume that this those one will be able to be changed into a normal visa mm. uh, what well, I don't exactly know and I will I will I will find out probably in, in any fo- following weeks uh, bef- I hope before it starts the quality, which is going to be the criteria or the interpretation of the law about the the, the immigration office how many years before? I mean, how many years? I mean, it's, it's going to be more than five years or not? <clears throat> um, that's probably the question. But it will be, will be able to be changed into a, a, a different tax regime in order to get benefits on that. Yeah, yeah as long as you can prove that this, this money is being exactly. earned exactly. outside exactly. of Spain. Yeah. It's really outside of Spain, more, um, at least 80%. Mm-hmm. Yeah, obviously, whenever, whenever you make the application, you have to prove um, it's a matter of proof. I mean, I'm a self-employment. I work with different companies. These are the companies I work. I have to uh, show the bank statements for the last three months minimum, uh, which shows on the end you have to convince the immigration office at the end that you are really like that, or you have a university career, you have been a professional for the last three, three years minimum, or what you are going to do in Spain. I mean, at the end you need to convince on the documents that you prove 
whenever you made application, yeah. And did you say, or do we know, that it's going to be an initially one year and then you get yeah, to renew yeah. it? So it will be that way, the same yeah. as some of the others? Yeah, it looks like it's going to be the same. I mean, yeah. Let's say what they are the end, it's going to be some, um, we call it laws, and then there are some uh, specific um, instructions in order to, to amend or to... Uh, com, uh, confirm what uh, the proceedings are in order to make the application. Good thing is going to be is going to be like it will be done. It will be able to be done uh, once you are physically in Spain. So someone comes as a, for example, as a tourist and comes here and says in Barcelona and Valencia or here in Javier and says, "Oh, I love this. I want to. I, I don't want to go back. I want to stay." Yeah. And we will be able to in the at least in the following thirty days to apply for that. And will be able to be done telematically. So it means that. Uh, will not have to be uh, the process of, for example, a non lucrative visa in the Spanish consulate. Then they get uh, the application. Then they have to have three months' time to answer. And then once you get a one-month uh, answer, and you get the visa, and then you go to Spain, and then you land into Spain. So it would take three, five months more. In this case, it will be a, a specific, very rapid, obviously, with the proof, with the translation, documents that you need to, in, in case that you need to show some, a public document, you need to have a postal of information. Everything needs to be rapid. But will be done telematically, can be done by your lawyer, by the computer. Like It's like the golden visa really, in, in right. these ways. Because the office that is going to approve it is, is the same office that approves the golden visa in Madrid. Aha. Uh-huh. So it's, it, it may not be that um, just because it's new, they're all going to come in at once and there'll be a huge backlog. We don't know yet, but uh, it, yeah, it's, it looks a lot, like it's, looked like it's, it's a lot be, quicker. Yeah, I mean, it should be that way. I mean, at the end, this, this kind of uh, law, I mean, is uh, the principle of this law is to attract talent in many occasions that work with computers, digital, and even though any professional, I mean, it does, could be a lawyer, could be an um, a engineer, could be a consultant, um, anything really. Yeah. But at the end, they work with, I mean, it's digital. So at the end, it's... It should be like the Golden Visa has the system in order to apply telematically and be uh, answered very rapid. Mm. Okay. Well, you're saying, uh, yes, it starts in January next year. We think, oh, that's quite a way off. It's not. It's, 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 as you say, it's only just over a month and a half. Yeah, <laughs> it's a really rapid. We are having a, a, a next week a webinar. Yes. Specifically for this. Obviously, we will be um, um, answering any question. Obviously, we will show uh, specifically what says the law, what articles, what what says what we did, what we think is going to be interpreted, and we are obviously with recommendations, and um, and obviously it's very it's extremely linked with taxes, with non resident tax. Yes, so, yeah, yeah, that will definitely always come into play <laughs> because it looks like it's going to be like very. I mean, the process of apply is going to be in some way easy. Mm-hmm. But regarding taxes, it's not going to be, it looks like it's going to be also easy, but it looks like it needs to be clear. Many, many, many questions. Yes. And if we've learned anything about uh, applying for visas and like the thing that's going to take time is you um, having to go and then they say, oh, no, you need this. And then you got to exactly, come back exactly, and back and exactly. forth. Okay, <laughs> so try and make sure you've got everything up front. Uh, so that's uh, next week. Is that on the Wednesday yeah. or Thursday? It's um, a thing we have planned to do it on. On Wednesday, yeah. on Wednesday, because uh, the last one was on, on Thursday, exactly. wasn't it? Last week, that one was on Thursday because we couldn't do it on, on Wednesday. But it, we normally do it on Wednesday. Yes, yeah, so you're back on back on track with exactly. those. Exactly. Yeah. Okay, and it's uh, through to the website then, alicantilawyers.es. If you go to the live TV bit, that's where you can register for the webinar. The, the details on the new one not on there yet, but they will be. And the, the previous ones up there to watch. Was the last one a Q and A thing? You did a whole hour of yeah. question and answers, and uh, must have been all sorts. We like to. I mean, obviously, we we uh, open our minds, our knowledge uh, in order to help people and to answer specifically questions that people have. Hmm. It's not just to give me like, like in a speech and say, well, this is what uh, about anything. It's just to directly to answer and help people with specific questions. Sometimes we can answer, sometimes we cannot because we need more information or maybe we don't understand or maybe we just don't know the answer. Sometimes it happens at, the, at that time uh, directly. But this is 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 very direct. The connection between um, between us and the clients rapidly and easy and 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 this is fantastic. We love it. Obviously, we cannot. We we receive. I would say hundreds. Mm. I'm, I'm amazed about hundreds of questions. Many of them are quite specifically, and many of them are really good questions because I understand why they are asking that. And um, but we cannot answer obviously uh, all of them. We are like a. Running question answer question answer yeah. yeah sure the best of you but but it, yeah. it's good because you then learn what are the most pressing issues for a lot of people what's most on their minds at the moment and what's the most important thing exactly they exactly. want to they yeah. want to find out exactly about, yeah. that's right <laughs> all right well so the uh, yeah that's the easiest way to find your way through the website alicantilawyers.es. Beth Air and Aredia are your international lawyers based on the Costa Blanca. 
We've been assisting expats for over a decade with laws to protect assets and look after your loved ones, and continue to do so in post-Brexit Spain. For advice on tax, wills and inheritance, immigration or real estate, call 965-480-737.